Hello everybody, Aris Salehi is here and today's topic is uh, another character of Pokemon series, Eevee. Uh, let's start and sculpt it in ZBrush. This character is a quadruped, uh, so I started with primitive objects, cylinder and a sphere, and also deformers that you can find it in 3D Gizmo, but for the tail, I fixed that the tail shape and masking and extruding for different parts. You need to know a little bit about the anatomy of the quadrupeds. Um, I studied uh, a fair amount of time for the quadrupeds uh, to know them, their uh, bones that are underneath for the, both the legs and the body. And right now it's helping me for creating this stylized character. So it's, if you learn from the real world, it can help you to create the stylized characters and the creatures that they don't exist in the real world. So placing the eyeballs and fixing the eye sockets using clay build up and move brush. Next, going to the muzzle area and right now I'm using Dynamish to help me to create freely the shapes and basically the forms that I need and later we will remesh it. Started to basically sculpt the paws And looking that from different angles and right now I started the fur. Uh, for the fur I masked part of the body and I used the extract option. If you see on the right side, it's, I still open the submenu for that. When you hit the extrude, extract, sorry, it's extracted from the main mesh and create a new uh, sub-tool for you. Uh, for a fair amount of time, at the beginning, I had the symmetry for my fair, but after that I turned off the symmetry because it's very important uh, to not have symmetry for the fair to so it looks like more believable. And I use uh, basically a snake hook brush for this part to make these spikes and move brush to move them around and the other thing that you need to consider when you're making fair, you need to look at each spike from different angle and move them around. So because when you're using just a snake brush, it's extrude them uh, in just one direction. But you need to change the direction a little bit as you see I'm doing here for the spikes of the hair too. I'm constantly changing my views. When I uh, extruding, uh, extruding that spikes out uh, to make it more believable and nice. So it's more refining and after that dig inside of the ears. I felt the eyes were too big and push them back a little bit. Fixing the shape of the ears, adding more spikes based on the reference in front of the ears, and I wanted to have a sharp transition in the tail area, so I tried to mask it, and after that, use them standards to achieve that. The two small spikes at the end of the tail. Based on the reference, this character doesn't have too much sparks on this tail. So the retopology uh, starts here. I mask it, use poly paints, but I didn't like it. I used a zero measure guide for both spikes and the face to get the result that I was looking for. And after that, projecting the detail from the high res mesh, which has a Dynamish I need to the 
make sure this subdivision level. The same thing for the fair part around the neck. And after that, when I uh, transfer the detail from the high res mesh with dynamesh to that mesh with the uh, subdivision levels, I go with, this, uh, with the low intensity of that smooth brush to uh, basically remove the artifacts from the surface of the mesh. And then is sander, then clay build up, the digging inside of the ears. And make a little bit sharp transition in that area. And adding him more love into the paws and separation between each toe. And I changed the material from the basic material, it's the basic standard material, to the skin shader to give me more, uh, it's basically it's true colors. And I use a standard brush which is in RGB mode and the Z add mode is off on that. And as you see on the right side, I created a new layer and the layer is on the recording mode. So it helps me to paint on the model with more confidence. Later, if there is anything happened and I didn't like it, simply I can delete that without losing the other paints that I already had before that layer on my mesh. Maybe you can have different layers for different parts. Adding these nice shapes, some kind of fakes the spikes of the hair just by using paint, painting, and the tail area based on the reference I'm doing that. But uh, I didn't have that reference for the whole of that uh, spikes that I was painting, so sometimes you need to be a little bit creative. And I'm definitely sure you are and um, follow the patterns that you see on the reference and wrap it around your mesh right so the same thing for the fair I had a reference for part of that but for the remaining I started to come up with uh, by myself and um, basically go all the way around that fair uh, I do it in two passes. The first pass it's a little rough and uh, it creates the idea that I have in my mind. But the second pass that is the source, I write and see I'm doing that. I try to basically clean up, cleaning up and finalizing the uh, spikes. Later I saw that I need to add a little bit shadow or dark color in the neck area and then I added I saw that the transition is very sharp and it doesn't match with the character I try to soften it by painting with the color between the sharp color and the color that was the local color I choose a color between these two and basically paint it on the border of the these two colors eyes a nice border around that using a standard brush and lazy mouse and right now I see I am masking that's basically the purplish color to make it a little bit uh, brighter yes and adding a black color here so to help the a pause pops up and when you have a fur, if you make it a little bit puffier, it will be much better on your character. So this is the final result. I hope you learned something out of that and have a great day. Thank you.